Here we go. 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 Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Heavy Repping. My name is John Tron Davidson, and I'm here once again in our super best chicken chicken <laughs> test location in the southwest of England. So today I thought I would answer a question that I was posed by a friend of mine the other day when I was asking him about what content he would like to see on the website. And he said, why should you care? As pejorative as it is, this is a very valid question. It's the same as saying, why should you care about cables or straps? Or why should you care about your cabinets or anything like that? So today I thought I would take five steps to answer this unkind query and uh, hopefully that will help you understand why picks are so important as a general rule and why it is that I do this as a whole. Before we begin though a quick shout out to my friend and colleague Mr Brandy Rowe who is a dude and has some wonderful music out. Uh, you can go and check out his stuff at the link here and in the description. Wonderful man, miss you very much. However, there are five very good reasons why you should be in interested in picks, and I'm going to lay them out for you like a big thing. So, without further ado, let's go. Number one is money. So if you think about how much money you've put into your guitar, into your pedals, into your amp, into your cables, into everything else, you maybe start to think about the fact that spending 50p on a plectrum or spending a tenner on a plectrum isn't that outrageous. I get a lot of people telling me that what they wouldn't want to do is spend um, 20 quid or 40 dollars on a plectrum and then lose it. Uh, to which I would reply, take better care of your stuff. I've lost one pick in the last two years because I'm very very careful with my stuff and I have literally a thousand plectrums so uh, if you're going to spend two grand or more on one guitar some people spend two grand on their whole setup whatever then you shouldn't be afraid of putting that little bit extra in to really go the whole distance and get your rig sounding exactly the exactly the way that you want it number two is tone so tone is the whole kind of the whole reason why I do this but the the principal thing about it is is that tone is a completely unique and individual thing some tones that people get where you would think I can't believe you're doing this why are you doing this and you would cross the street to avoid that sound if you think about the number of people who have tried to get the Stevie Ray Vaughan sound for example or they say oh, I want the John Mayer sound that I want this it's clearly really important and it's the fundamental characteristics of that person's sound and nuances that it is that you're chasing. So it seems a bit crazy that you wouldn't want to cultivate that on your own. And one of the best ways of doing that is to use picks because it's literally where your tone begins. What you strike the string with determines all of the attack, it determines its nuances, it determines the whole body of the note and that is why it's important. Moving on from that, step three or number three I suppose is enunciation. If I come to you and I say good morning, how are you? How has it been? How are you doing? It's totally, it's monotone, right? If I come to you and say good morning, how's it going? How are you doing? How are you getting on? I've said the same things but I haven't said them in the same way. I haven't had said them with the same pauses, the same inflections, all that sort of stuff. And that is what picks can do because each one of these that I'm holding in my hands right now, this is Stone, uh, Stone Age picks, Hawk picks, and a Plex. Each one of these, they're all picks, right? But they all allow me to say what I'm trying to say in a different manner. And it is those tiny little, almost undetectable things that give your sound all of its character. It's nuance, it's subtlety, it's it's the, the essence of it. And that's really why these are such an important thing. Number four is, when you look at your rig and you see the colors and you see the brands and you see 
the history involved in it, your personal history, your personal investment, uh, how all your stuff looks and feels and all the rest of it. It's an intrinsic part of who you are and the music that you make. So when you look at a big, it's the same thing as if you look at a big wall of oranges or a big wall of marshals. There's a certain thing that goes along with that. There's an unspoken, implicit side to that that's something that goes beyond music just in a sort of, you know, riffs and headbanging sort of thing. When I go and look at my collection that's all, all over the room, to see all those different things I find really exciting. It's like looking at, you know, a dozen fuzz pedals and saying, yes, they're all fuzz, but this one is like this and this one has this characteristic. That's really exciting. That's why you're on this channel in the first place, I would assume, because you could just get a pedal board that's all boss and it'll all do the job, but there's thousands of companies out there making stuff that looks like this and has this thing and it's got this other quality. And that's really exciting. Fundamentally, you probably, most people can get away with just having like a drive and a delay and you know a reverb and a tuner and that would be fine. But we don't do that. We don't stop it there. And so I find, you know, I'll play a different way using a BHL Wizard as I would from using a Stone Age River or a Vpex Jalapeno or the, uh, the Polyspectrum Shuriken, all of these things because they're all different. They all make us play a different way. And that's because they're special things. This is the final thing, number five, and it leads on very much from number four, which is that all of the people that you come across who make picks like these, the Ace Performance series, or the Zufoy Rost, or anything like that, they're all small businesses. They're all usually one or two person operations who couldn't find what they wanted in the rack. And so they've decided to go and craft these tools, these implements, to allow them to make music the way that they wanted to. Epo Franken from Chicken Picks did the same thing. Uh, Vinny from V Picks did the same thing. All of that sort of stuff. All of these, all of these implements, these tools, as I like to think of them, uh, they were all created for a singular purpose, which was to allow for a greater engagement with the instrument that you're playing. That is the whole point of the exercise. So when you go and you buy a pick, like say one of these, this is a Hawk Tonebird 6. Um, when you go and buy one of these, you're not buying a pick like you're buying a Dunlop. When the, we can get into a whole thing about that, but you're not just going and buying uh, a hammer stamped piece of Delrin. What you're buying is somebody sat down and they crafted this. Somebody spent their time making it. When I got my guitar, and this is the same for most of you, when I got my guitar, the stick, I could have very simply, given that I spent most of my life working in shops, I could have very simply waited until a good strat came along or waited until I got a particular SG or something like that. And I've certainly owned a lot of guitars like that, but the stick, was made for me. Somebody sat down and made it. And it, it's that extra labor, that extra human element that makes it such an exciting thing for me to have and for me to use. The whole thing with, the whole thing with music, which makes it such an exciting prospect, is the fact that it's a truly, it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a physical form, it doesn't have a sort of intrinsic value uh, in, in financial terms. What it does do is it allows us as individuals to share ourselves with each other in a, in a really esoteric and truly engaging, phenomenal way. There's nothing else that I know of that can speak to a whole room of people or a field of people quicker than, and more deeply than that. And these wee things here, this is where it starts for majority of players. When you pick up your guitar and you grab your thing and you, 
and you play your first note, whatever, it's the sure, it's the surety of knowing I've got this in my hands, I know I'm going to make this sound, I'm in full control of it, and isn't that such, it's such a, such a big deal, it's like when you pick up something really special that's been made by one person for a singular purpose, and it allows you to say exactly what you want to say, isn't that inspiring? Isn't that a magnificent thing? Yes, yes it is, don't worry, you don't have to answer that. So, I hope this has made some sense in terms of why it is that picks are so important and why you should care about them in your setup. If you would like to ask any questions, feel free to do so. I'm always available to do that on Instagram or at heavyrepping.com or on here. Stick whatever you like in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer all your questions. In the meantime, I will return next Tuesday with another video from the Plectroverse. My name is John Tron Davidson. This is heavy repping and I will see you soon. Just remember, if you're not sure what to do in life, rep hard, rep heavy and take care.